Hi friends and welcome to my channel. My name is Susanna and in this video I'll be showing you step by step how to do high-end skin retouching using frequency separation. To make a long story short, frequency separation allows you to split your image in two layers, one for detail and texture and one for color and tone. This will come in handy because our goal is to eliminate and replace the trouble areas of the skin while keeping all the texture of the pores intact. Let me know in the comment section if you've already been using frequency separation and if you're running into any trouble. So, let's get this party started and let's do some editing. The first step is setting up our layers for frequency separation. Click on your background layer, hit Ctrl J and duplicate your layer twice. This will be the foundation for all our work. Now, let's label these layers. The top layer will be your higher layer for texture and the lower layer for color and tone. Click the top layer and turn off the visibility and then go to your lower layer. We're going to start there. Go to Blur and click Gaussian Blur. What we're doing with blurring is making all the colors and tones of the skin blend with each other. If you go too high with your radius value, it's just going to blur everything into a big mess. Likewise, if you choose a value that's too small, it won't have any effects. What you're looking for is a lower value in which the colors and tones blend with one another but at the same time, you can still see the shapes and some of the details in your image. The eyes, the nose, the lips. I always keep my Gaussian blur in between 5 and 7, maximum, depending on how lit my image is. Click OK and let's move on to our texture layer. Turn the visibility back on for this layer and go to Image, Apply Image. Now, take a look at the settings on my screen and depending if you're running on 8-bit or 16-bit, here's the settings that you should have in order to make this work. I've also included a link in the description box to the F-Stoppers article where you can find more details on these settings. Now, if you're running in 8-bit like I am, here's what you have to do. In the layer section, make sure that you always select your lower layer for color and tone, and for the blending mode, choose subtract. As you can see, the image has turned gray, but you can still see the outline of the eyes and other features. This is how you know you did it right. Hit OK and go back to your higher texture layer. Go to the blending mode and choose linear light so we can bring our image back. Hit shift, select both layers and drag them down to the group icon. Make a group and now let's label this group as frequency separation. And that's it. We have our setup done and we can start working. I promise that after you do this a couple of times, it will just become second nature and you'll memorize it really fast. I shot this image using natural light only because honestly it's something that I prefer as a photographer and it will also give us a better view of the skin and pores as our eyes are used to this type of lighting. Our skin is a beautiful canvas but like any other surface it has different textures and what actually causes trouble areas is not the skin itself necessarily but the shadows that are created. Take a look at the smile lines or under eye circles. There's nothing wrong with the skin itself, but the shadows created from the fact that the smile lines are deeper than the skin around them is making them visible as they cast a shadow. The same goes for under eye circles. It's actually the shadow that's being cast in between the cheekbone and the under eye area that's creating those bags we all know and dislike. So, I have a solution for this and let's fix it. My number one tip and most valuable information is that you have to start your editing on the color and tone layer first. We have to fix the color imbalances and even out the skin tone before we even attempt to fix minor flaws in the texture of the skin. Doing this step first will actually make it easier to work on the texture layer. So, keeping that in mind, let's head down to the color and tone layer, click on it and select the healing brush. I'm gonna go in the under eye area and start off by pushing the Alt key and selecting the color I want to start healing the area with. You can't hear it in the video, but I'm constantly pushing the Alt key while I move from area to area in order to select the closest and more similar color tone. As far as brushes go, for the color and tone layer, I alternate in between the healing brush and the brush tool. I rarely touch the clone tool on this layer. We're gonna do this over the entire image, going over all the imperfections of the skin. This way, we'll be fixing those shadows that I was telling you about, and as you'll see, the flaws in the skin will start to even out and look better without doing anything to the texture. That's why it's really important that we start on this layer. I like going over everything, paying attention to always change the size of my brush using the brackets according to the area of the face that I'm working on. Don't worry, I'm not editing that fast, the video is just sped up.
I'm gonna be moving on to the second part of the face and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Be very careful when you're working in the shadowy parts of the face or the body. Remember that we're three-dimensional and removing the shadows will visually flatten the area and we don't want that. So I recommend that you just even out the color a bit if it's needed and then move on. And if there's no visible flaws in the shadowy contoured areas, then don't touch it. I learned that the hard way. When I started out editing, I used to edit absolutely everything and I'd end up with flat pictures. So learn from my mistakes so you don't waste any more time. We're gonna leave out the stray hairs for now and I'm gonna show you why when we get to the texture layer. Now, still on my color and tone layer, I'm going to move on to the brush tool so I can start evening out the skin tone even more. Keep your opacity and fill fairly low, I like these values, and choose a soft brush with zero hardness. This part is like a painting. You're trying to blend all the skin tones and create smooth transitions in between the different bone structures of the face. Remember the most important thing, I'm constantly pushing the Alt key and selecting the closest matching color to the area that I'm working on. And as I even out the skin, I'm starting to see other problem areas start to stand out. So I'm gonna alternate in between the healing brush and the brush tool to achieve the result that I want. Now that I'm fairly content with how the photo looks for this stage, I'm ready to move on to the texture layer and start clearing up some problem areas. Continuing with my healing brush selected, I'm gonna go in under the eye area and start cleaning up the fallen mascara and whatever else is trespassing around there. I'm keeping my brush size really small so that I can get in between the natural lines of the eye without disturbing them too much. And just as I said that, as you can see, I went too far, so now I have to fix it. I couldn't do it, but where would the fun be? So, a really easy way to fix mistakes is to now alternate in between layers as well, so that I'm evening out the skin tone that I just wrongly copied from one place to another and then putting the texture back. Listening to my self-talk, I realized that that doesn't sound easier at all. It would have just been easier to hit that Control z button, but I didn't. Now that I've cleaned up as much as I can around the smile lines using the healing brush, it's time to go to the brush tool and back to the tone and color layer to even out the tones a bit before I go in with the clone brush to make those stubborn lines fade away.
Back on the texture layer, I'm going in full force with the clone brush, 100% opacity and fill with a really small brush size, as small as the lines that I want to make disappear. Hitting that Alt key, I'm selecting the texture right next to the fine line and I'm just cloning it away. Continuing with the clone brush, I'm just going to lower my opacity and fill a little bit and I'm going to take another pass over the same area and just blend it out a little bit, make it smoother. And I'm doing the same thing with the brush tool, but on the color and tone layer. and then repeating the whole process on the other side. Now, let's get to the stray hair situation. Your first instinct might be to hit up the texture layer and just heal or clone those stray hairs away. Doing that, however, leaves behind a color smudge, which is not nice. So, it's important to remember the shadow theory from earlier. Even those thin hairs cast a shadow underneath them, so the best strategy to attack stray hairs is to first go to your color and tone layer and go over them with the healing brush, and even though it might not seem to do much, trust me on this, it will. Now, I'll switch back to the texture layer and there you go, they've smoothly gone away. Now that that's out of the way, I'm going to zoom out a bit and take a look at the entire image and just even out the skin tones a bit more. And that's it. Now comes the part which is personal to each and every one of you. The finished look can be as polished or as rough as you'd like it to be. Personally, after all is said and done, I like to go to the opacity of the frequency separation group and lower it. I like to bring back a little bit of the lines that I just spent 15 minutes taking out. But this is just my style. For example, in the editing that I do for my own photography, I really like to leave in a few flaws in the skin and not clean everything obsessively, although I'll be honest, I really want to. If you're like me and you also like spending hours in Photoshop, you know how easy it is to get carried away. So, over time, to combat my own bad impulses, I've developed the technique of leaving in some flaws. I feel that it makes the whole image more relatable and more human. I try to stay away from the look of plastic skin because let's face it, life in plastic isn't that fantastic. That's it really, there's not much else to frequency separation but understanding how to set up your layers and how to work on them. Now, 
This image isn't really complete. It's missing some dodging and burning. And if you're interested in that, check out my video on highlighting and contouring. Thank you so much for watching and hit the subscribe button if you think Photoshop is magic too. Take care.